This week's video is going to explain how I make drinking water as well as make water for my reef using this 5 stage 150 gallon a day RODI system. It's a very standard one, it's the one I sell on my website and it uses sediment, two carbons, a booster pump, goes through the membrane and then through a bunch of tubing that goes different directions and of course the DI stage. My DI is pretty much done, I have a replacement filter here ready to go but let me explain the drinking water step first. Matter of fact, let me show you from the very beginning what I do. I have a number of ball valves installed on the system to protect against a flood in the house as well as to control where those water is going in each section. This right here is my bleed valve, which I used to use for my drinking water, and now I just use it to get rid of the first two minutes of water to avoid TDS creep. I also have a valve right down here. That is how I turn off the water going to the system in the first place, especially when I'm out of town traveling or when uh, I need to change out the filters or membrane. Then up here I have a valve that goes to my drinking water that goes right through the wall, behind the fridge, under the kitchen sink, and feeds water directly into a bladder tank that I'll show you in a second. And this other valve up here is to feed water through the wall, through the ceiling, over into the fish room for top off water as well as for salt water. We're going to start off now with me going ahead and bleeding out the first two minutes of water. So all I do is take my bleed valve, open it up inside the washing machine, and let it run in there for about two minutes. As you can see the TDS is going to climb really high like the TDS creep video but then it's going to start dropping here. Just here it goes. By letting it waste off this first couple of minutes I don't have to worry about wasting the DI resin prematurely. You also will notice that I put a label on the top of the membrane housing to remind me when I replaced all of my filters. They're just about there. So at this point, this is about the TDS coming out of the membrane of the RO water before the DI stage for me to use for drinking water. Here's a peek under the sink. Uh, the bladder tank is that big thing right there that looks like a propane bottle. It has a valve on the top which can be used to turn off the water once it was full, but I never have had to turn that off ever. Then right there is a valve that's used to feed the water up to the spigot on top of the counter for getting drinking water. This third valve right here is used to send water over to the ice maker and drinking water on the fridge door. So my ice cubes are made of RO water as well. How do I know when the bladder tank underneath the sink is empty? When I turn on this valve and hardly anything comes out. It's definitely time for a refill. Now if you're going to run the bladder tank, it's really important to use a check valve in the line feeding to the bladder tank so that, that pressure coming back through the tubing can't push water through the DI resin. So there's a check valve installed right there before the ball valve that feeds my drinking water. Let's see where we're at. Okay, TDS is under 20. I'm happy with that. So I can go ahead and I can close this valve. That was my waistline. Now it's down to 18. And I can open this line and now water is flowing through the wall, under the sink, and into the bladder tank. The way a bladder tank works is there's a basically a balloon inside there. And as this water continues to fill that thing up, holding about three gallons of water, it'll squish the balloon completely. When it's time to have drinking water, you open the spigot on the counter like I showed you, and water will come out quickly because the balloon is expanding and pushing the water up the line. So one more time, the reason for the bladder tank is to push water, and we have a check valve to make sure that water can't push back through the lines and shoot through the DI resin, which would move the water through the resin too quickly. The next thing I'd like to tell you is how often I run my RODI system. I tend to run it twice a week. Once a week, I make drinking water for under the counter, which I then will use for making coffee, tea, some cooking, and you know, of course the ice cubes for my cold drinks. But then once it's done, I turn it off. And then in a few days, I'll turn it on again because that bladder tank will be depleted, and I will refill it one more time. And once the bladder tank is full, 
and my TDS has gone to the lowest point it's going to get coming out of the RO membrane because it's been working for a little while, then I'll switch it over to the reef to refill the top-off container that's underneath. So basically, two times a week, one time it runs for, I don't know, maybe 25, 30 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, then I turn it off, and then again in about three days, I'll run it for those 30 minutes or so. Once it's filled up under the sink, I can switch the two valves, and I can take whatever long, whatever period of time it takes to refill the water. I have a container under the tank that holds 45 gallons, and that uh, system runs about six and a quarter gallons an hour. So if it needs to fill up 20, 30 gallons of water, and it takes two, three, four hours, that's fine. It doesn't make a difference to me. There's a float valve. I'll show you what it looks like right now. So here's my top-off container. I built this in 2011. I have not put anything in there as much as I can avoid. This is only RODI water. There's a small access door right here where I can reach in to work on this float valve if I had to replace it. I keep it closed all the time. There's also a ball valve right here, which you can see is closed, so no water can get to here right now. I, I'm all about redundancy. And this container holds, like I said, 45 gallons of water. It should have lasted seven days. It turns out my reef only evaporates about 3.6 gallons a day, so it lasts more like 11 days. It's pretty impressive. So after about once a week, it's every seven days or so, I refill it. It might be down to here, and then I just start refilling it, and this float right here will rise up when it's full. The floor never gets wet. I never have to carry water, never have to move buckets. I have a top-off pump from the Smart ATO inside of this container. It pushes water up and sends it into my reef for replenishment as water evaporates. But I only turn this on for a few hours, once a week to refill, and then it's turned off so no accidents can happen. If all of this water went into my sump at once, the system's big enough it can handle it, but that's never happened. I have very specific things set up to make sure that things don't go wrong. The smart ATO itself turns itself off if it's been running too long. If it comes on, let's say it runs for, I don't know, 25 seconds. And the next time it turns on, if it takes four times longer than the last run, it shuts itself off, doesn't add any more water, and starts beeping forever until I unplug it. So I've never had to worry about it draining too much water out of this box. It's been running for about five minutes, so let's see what the water pressure is like coming out of the spigot now. Oh, much better already. And when it's completely full, it comes out super fast where I can fill up a glass in mere seconds. Right now, I mean, this glass took, what, six seconds to fill up? I'd say normally it's like more like two. All this hard work is making me thirsty. I have to say, RO water tastes fantastic, and I love that I make it myself at home. I actually, because it was out, I tried to drink some tap water. <laughs> it tasted horrible. I'm so used to RO water. I've been drinking RO water for years. Uh, also, some people wonder, can you drink RODI water? I don't because it tastes bad. I have metal fillings in my teeth from when I was a kid, and DI water is corrosive, and so it activates the metal in your teeth, and it tastes like you're chewing on tin foil. So if you don't like the flavor of DI water, that's why. I would recommend you just drink the RO water, not the deionized water. Save that for your reef. And check it out. TDS has already come down to 12 from before when it was at 18, just because it's been running for a while. Now it's down to 11. The longer a membrane works, the better and more efficient it is. Instead of triggering it on and off multiple times a day, turn it on once, run it hard, and turn it off. If you do it this way, your membrane will last longer, your production will be more efficient, and your DI resin will last longer. While we wait for the bladder tank to finish filling up, let's talk about where the water goes to the fish room. It doesn't actually go through the attic. It runs through the cabinetry, or above the cabinetry in the kitchen. So here you can see it's going up the wall, over the cross, uh, across the top of the doorway. Through that wall, I drilled a small hole, quarter inch tubing. Came through the wall, and you can see how it goes up through some sheetrock. Then, it just travels through this fur down right here, which it wasn't super easy to do, but got it done. And then it goes directly into that wall right there and into the fish room. This is where it comes into the fish room, right through the wall, and the quarter inch tubing just runs straight down. The total length of this tubing from the RO unit to this point is 25 feet, which just coincidentally happened to be the correct length of tubing sold at Home Depot with no connections in between, no points of failure to be concerned about. And so here's the tubing, comes down into a T-fitting. 
Then it goes to a ball valve. That one is shut off. That is the one that feeds the line into this container to fill it up. The container holds a total of 250 gallons of water. And when I add the salt, I have 250 gallons of salt water. <clears throat> the other end of the tubing follows down the wall and across here, and it continues across to the top of the container. By running the tubing through the walls of my house, I don't have to carry buckets of water anywhere ever. I do water changes into a drain. I pump water through plumbing. I have the RO system refilling containers by opening and closing ball valves. That's pretty much it. This is done now. Let's go switch the valves. I just checked the TDS is 10 coming out of the membrane. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this valve. No more water going to the kitchen. Now we're gonna send it over to the reef tank. I need to open the valve at the other end as well real quick. And the water coming out of the DI is measuring at two right now, which isn't too bad. It's a little bit up, but I'm not worried about numbers between one and five. So zero is ideal. One, two, three, four, around five, I'm gonna change it. I have one ready to go to replace it. You can tell that it's used up by how much it's already changed in color, just visually. And then the TDS meter tells me the truth, of course, which shows me right now that it's getting up there. So I'm gonna change it soon. So probably after I fill this top off container, that'll be it. I'll change this out, toss it, and put in a fresh one. So it's filling up. This is the final step. And then it'll be turned off again for several days until it's time to refill under the sink again. And then again in a week to refill this one. It's real simple. I hope you understood it. I hope you use your RODI system in a similar fashion because it'll last much longer that way. And it's safer for your, uh, your whole system anyway than to have it triggering on and off so frequently. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to my channel. And next week will be another interesting video, I hope. Thank you.